What's up guys? My name's Kyle. I'm the host of Body Talk. Today we're going to be talking about manual muscle testing and what it can tell you and what it cannot tell you. So we've got Chloe here. She's going to be our model. Manual muscle testing is something that a lot of physical therapists and occupational therapists use to kind of grade the different muscle groups to see which ones are strong, to see which ones are weak. That way you can kind of, you know, focalize your treatment plan. And so today we're going to be looking at the lower extremities, the legs, and we're going to go through these different muscle groups. Um, so for you, the average viewer, maybe you're not a physical therapist or an occupational therapist, you can do this too. We're going to show you how to do this in an easy, simple way. That way, if you feel like you're having some form of muscular imbalance, you can go through these manual muscle testing, see where you're weak, see where you need to focus on. That way you can get a more focused exercise program. Hang around to the end. I'm going to give you the best tip when it comes to how much pressure you want to put through each muscle group to give you a more reliable grading. With that, let's get into it. All right, so the first muscle group we're going to look at are the hip flexors. So we're going to look at hip flexion, main muscle being the iliopsoas from this position. So what we'll do, we'll get her to bring her knee right up here. Oh man, what are we doing? We're coming way to the side. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to keep that big height to the side because we start compensating with muscles other than the hip flexors. So I'm going to get her to come up to my hand and I'm going to try to push her down. Good. I would grade that about a four. Took me a little resistance to get her down, but she went down fairly easy. Stick around to the end. I'm going to post a manual muscle grade chart that's going to break down uh, what you would grade each individual muscle with the specific criteria for that. It will explain why that's a four. I think she can do a little better. Let's come up again. I'm going to try to push her down again. Oh uh, yeah, a lot stronger that time. I'd probably grade that a four plus. A lot of times I give people two tries to kind of get the hang of the movement, to get a true grade of that muscle. So the next way we're going to do it, we're going to lay down here. We're going to bend this knee up. And so, the advantage of this position is we get a little more rectus femoris, two joint muscle here involved, and it is a mild hip flexor, so we want to kind of get a grade on that. We're going to look at it more specifically later as well, but all she's going to do is come up to my hand. I'm going to push right here on this middle calf, push her down, probably grade that about a four, and that'll do it for hip flexion. All right, so the next movement we're going to look at is knee extension. Knee extension is going to look at the big quad muscle in the front of your leg. Uh, the quad muscle is probably the most important muscle for you to have if you want to have good knee control and do everyday things like climb stairs and walk and that type of thing. Uh, but now if you're a major athlete, you're going to want really good hamstrings and glutes. That's a, that's a tale for a different time. But to look at knee extension, and get her to kick her leg straight out, perfect. And I'm gonna come here, and what I like to do is get a little bend in that knee right there. That prevents any mechanical locking at the knee if she's got some type of issue. And it, it puts a lot of pressure through that knee if it's locked out and then I go pressing on it. You don't want that. So get a little bend. I'm gonna try to push her down. Good quad. Quads are usually pretty strong. That's going to be hard for me to move. I, mean, I might be able to just bear down. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that quad's pretty solid. I would grade that a five. That'll do it for knee extension. Why the freak did I get a four plus last time? Why didn't I? Hey guys, so next we're going to do ankle dorsiflexion. And so let's do your left. And so what we're looking at here is this movement coming up. And so what you would do is you'd get her to come up. And what you're going to look for as far as substitutions go is this big toe. If it's really kicking in, coming back, you know, that's, that's a substitution. Or if she's coming way in like this, she's trying to use those inverted muscles. Don't want to do that. We want to come straight up, keeping this leg in a straight line. Come up to my hand. That's good motion. And all I'm going to do is kind of cue her here to stay there. And then I'm going to try to push her foot down. Very good. I'm grade that. I'm grade that a five. Uh, a lot of times, dorsiflexors are weak in someone who's diabetic or has some form of neuropathy. Uh, in a young, healthy person like Chloe, not really something we have to look at. But with that, let's go ahead straight into big toe extension. 
I like to look at this because we want to know if that nerve root has been affected at this level. You know, each level we come down, we're at a different nerve root. And so if we're looking at a lower back or if we're looking at somebody with diabetes or neuropathy, like we said, this great, their dorsiflexion may be great, but then that great toe is struggling. So we'll get her to kick that big toe up to my thumb. Good, and we'll try to push her down. Good, and so she's strong there, so no signs of any of that. Uh, you want great toe extension to be strong because if it's dragging on us, it can cause you to trip and fall. See that a lot in our neuropathy patients and our diabetic population. So that'll do it from here. All right, so next we're gonna look at hip abduction and hip adduction from the sideline position. So we're only gonna look at the right side, but in a real scenario, you obviously wanna look at right versus left to see if there's any discrepancies there. I look at hips a lot for lower back pain or a runner who's having knee pain. A lot of that knee is influenced by the hip actually. The back is also influenced greatly by the hip. Think about it, it's at the center, it's our base, we need it to be very strong so that we're stable everywhere else. The hips oftentimes get neglected in the gym because we're working uh, muscles that go front to back. Think about bench press, squat, just two of the major lifts there. We want to look at some muscles that actually make us go in this horizontal plane, up side to side. So we're going to get her to lay flat. I'm going to get you roll and stuff. <laughs> well, you say flat, that is flat. All right, and so we're going to look at hip abduction, that main muscle being the gluteus medius, a very important muscle. So we're going to have her to bend this bottom knee. We're going to straighten out the top. We're going to make sure we're rolling all the way on her side. And what we'll do, we'll get her to raise her leg up to me. Good. And I usually go about right here. A lot of times what you'll see, and I'm just going to show this on Chloe, is people want to rotate that toe out. So let me kind of rotate you. They want to do this. They want to get the hip flexor involved. Look out for that. We want to make sure, I like to tell them to kind of point their toe down. That ensures that we're looking at that glute knee. And so when I do, I come right here. I'm going to push down, just like so. And a lot of people are weak in that position. I'd grade that. It's, it's pushing three plus four. I'd probably go four, because I think Chloe would be mad at me if I went any lower than that. So, but. Uh, like I said, most people are weak in that muscle, so be on the lookout for that. So next, we're going to look at hip adductors, but we're actually going to look at this on the left foot. So we're going to come here, bring this leg in front, and straighten out our bottom leg. Now I'm going to get her to bring this bottom leg up toward my hand. Perfect. You want to make sure that she's able to get at least 75% of her leg off the table. Anything 75% and above, we're going to grade it three and above. We'll see that on the chart later. So I come right here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come here so I'm not pushing on that actual adductor group. I'm gonna push right there, push her down. She's a little stronger there, and that's a hard. You're good. You can rotate back. That's a hard muscle there. That's a hard position. To, that's a hard position to achieve, but it's the best we got. It's the best way we can test that muscle. So right on, we're going to move into hip extension and knee flexion. All right, so we're going to go right into hip extension. Chloe's going to keep her knee straight. She's going to pick this leg up toward my hand, and I'm going to try to push her down there. Good. Uh, we're looking at glutes with this, looking at hip extension. The glute is oftentimes a big muscle, but it's not always the strongest muscle. This is a hard uh, movement to achieve. Sometimes we've got a hip flexor in the front that's tight that's limiting us in this position. So you may notice that as you go through them. Next, we're gonna look at knee flexion. So she's gonna bend up here, looking at the hamstring group, string group. So I come right behind her ankle, hand kind of on her Achilles. I'm gonna to try to pull her down. Good, all right. So that'll do it for knee flexion and hip extension. We're gonna look at a couple more movements at the ankle. So. The first one's gonna be ankle in, inversion. And so what that movement is, is coming in like this. This is gonna specifically look at the posterior tibialis muscle. A lot of times in runners, if this muscle is weak, we start getting kind of flat footed, which leads to problems at the knee, makes the knee come in. So we wanna make sure that muscle is strong. 
And then also diabetic patients, this muscle likes to fill them sometimes. And a lot of times their feet will just collapse almost because it controls the arch of the foot. You don't want to lose your arch. And so the way you want to grade this, she's going to come in just like so. I'm going to try to break her coming out. She's pretty strong. And so another way you can test this, I've learned both ways uh, through my PT learning. And then she's going to come out. And then what she'll do is she'll push into my hand through it. And I'll kind of let her win and I grade it that way. The book way is going to be the breaking, me trying to break you. Uh, and then the same thing goes for eversion. So you might want to look at eversion if you have rolled your ankle, because a lot of times we'll kind of relax it. Rolling your ankle is going to just be that movement. And so you want these everters to be strong so you can get out. And so the way to grade that, there she's coming out. I try to break her coming in. And what we can do the other way here where she pushes out, I grade it that way. I'd probably grade her. I'd probably grade her a five both ways. It's pretty strong. I couldn't break her. That's a five in my book. The last muscle group we're going to look at is the plantar flexors. So we're thinking about gastroc, calf, soleus muscle here. So what we'll get Chloe to do is pump the brake coming up and then hold it there. And I'll try to come back up to my hand. I'm going to try to push her down. Good. And that's a good way to do that against gravity. You know that you're a three out of five and above on the manual muscle testing grading. But the true plantar flexor test is the ability to do 25 calf raises uh, on, one single, on one single leg. That's a pretty difficult task. Uh, a lot of times people are pretty strong uh, general population in the plantar flexor group. A lot of times you're going to lose that dorsiflexor more so than the plantar flexor. Uh, even stroke patients are going to have a lot of times spasticity in that muscle that kind of helps them with, uh, with walking and that type of thing. So not something that we see as a week a lot, but something you do want to check to make sure it's not a nerve root problem going on. And so that'll do it for plantar flexion. <laughs> Alright guys, I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. I promised you the secret to the most reliable manual muscle testing grades. Uh, we're going to get into that. So the big thing to realize here with these positions that we were in for these muscle groups is those are grades for three and above. So three out of five and above. So meaning that you can oppose gravity with your movement. Your muscle is strong enough to fight gravity. So we're going to put that chart up over here and uh, I want you to study that, you know, look it over. I can sit here and explain it to you, but until you really look at it to you for yourself, uh, it's going to be hard to grasp. And so, going against gravity, three and above. And so, basically, if you can't, like if we're doing knee extension and I can't get up, we're going to have to modify that position to where gravity is out of the equation. And so, what you would do is you would lay on your side and then you're not as opposed to gravity. That's a different video for a different time. This video was more framed for the general population, uh, you know, fairly healthy people who can have normal strength in their muscles. So the big thing with manual muscle tests, here comes the secret to a reliable manual muscle test. The secret is manual muscle tests are subjective at the end of the day. We can put definitions behind them and we can do research and everything and make them as reliable as possible. But at the end of the day, it's whoever's administering the test, it's their judgment on how strong you are. And so the way you can make these tests reliable for you is to, is to use the exact same amount of pressure for every muscle and do that every single time. Some people will tell you, some books will tell you, that you need to do your max amount of effort for every muscle group. You know, I like to use common sense with these things. If I'm using, if I'm doing manual muscle tests on an elderly, very frail, 100 pound patient, uh, and we're doing knee extension, I'm not gonna give all I cut right at the beginning. I'm gonna kinda ease into her, and then if she's pretty strong, you know, maybe I can put my normal force into that movement but I'm gonna use common sense I don't want to hurt anybody so 
use discretion when you're doing these manual muscle tests. So, the secret is use the same exact amount of force with every movement. I use the same amount of force with hip abduction as I did with ankle dorsiflexion. flexion. And that's going to give you the most reliable test. And so with that, we'll conclude the video. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. We got a lot more coming. Big things coming your way. And that'll wrap it up with Body Talk. We'll see you next time.